Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be doing an initial impressions and unboxing of the AOC C27 G2Z. If at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below, 40 US, UK, Canada, and international links. Let's crack this open. A fairly inexpensive price point, around 160 bucks currently at the time of filming on Amazon. So you're getting 240 hertz here at a non-premium price point. Obviously we're still getting 1080p, but we obviously expect that at this price point. Let's see what we get. I'm actually quite interested to see how good or not good this is. A little bit of some manual here. All right, now pulling this out, we have the bottom of the stand. We actually have a surprising amount of metal here. This is just plastic. It does actually feel fairly cheap, but we do expect it for the price point, but metal all along the bottom and a nice high quality thumb screw. I'd like to see that. Then the height adjustable section of the stand, which is nice to have, especially at this price point. And this follows suit here, actually having a surprising amount of metal. We have metal mounting plates there. We have some nice cable management. This overall does feel fairly well built, more well built than this piece. Um, but overall for 160 bucks, uh, I would say that's pretty good. We can also see here, that we do have rotation. So it looks like it's gonna be able to fully rotate. We have height adjustability, tilt obviously, and it looks like we might actually have some swivel. So let's put this together, line them up, put them in, and then just screw it in together. And there we go, that's the stand in. All right, now we also get a power cable. This does have an internal power supply, so you just need this cable, cheap to replace, which is really nice. A display port cable and an HDMI cable. And then we have some manuals, but Really, the setup process is quite easy because it's a clip-in stand. Let's get to the panel itself. So there it is, easy access. All you do is line these little pins up with this right up there, go in at an angle like that, and then just simply press down. You'll hear a little click like that, and then you can just pull it out and take this plastic off. Now, this is a curved panel, which is actually pretty cool at this price point. They can do this because this is a VA panel. We also have a little bit of a warranty card right here. So let's check this out. Three year dead pixel warranty, three year replacement warranty, one year accidental damage. That's actually pretty wild. Um, they give you a free accidental damage. So if I drop this on the table right now, by accident, they're gonna replace it. That's, that's kind of wild. Although to be fair, I have never tried or talked to customer support at AOC ever. We've also never been sent an AOC monitor. So I have no idea how backed this warranty actually is, but if it is backed, that's actually a pretty sweet deal. Okay, so the back of the monitor looks pretty much as you would expect. It's not horrible quality, but it's definitely cheaper. Let's check out the ports actually while we're here so we can get a good look. Two HDMIs, a display port, and then a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We then have the power over there. So overall, exactly what you need, nothing more. On the front here, we're gonna take this little sticker off because I think it looks bad, but we have a little bit of red accenting right there. These are the buttons for the control of the menu system, which I'm gonna tell you right now is not going to be great. Overall, the curve is fairly minimal. It's not a massive curve, but it is kind of cool to have in this cheap of monitor and it's 240 hertz, but that's enough talking. Let's get this on the desk, do initial impressions and gaming test, and then we're also gonna do a ghosting test, which is very important to do with a VA panel monitor. All right, guys, now with it on the desk, let's turn it on with the power button that is right there, a little bit of a light. All right, guys, now up on the screen, we can see, obviously this is 1080p, so you're not gonna get the greatest PPI, especially with this being a 27 inch panel, and we're not even doing 240 hertz, so let's go right in. All right, so we can see here, we are doing 1920 by 1080, which is its full resolution. Let's push this all the way to 240 hertz, and once with that, and now it's very buttery smooth, 240 hertz. Now the brightness here seems to be good, nothing amazing, but we haven't pushed this all the way up. So, or at least I believe we haven't. So let's go to the menu there. This is the menu, very unattractive looking. Um, they do have some kind of cooler animations. It kind of like moves. Uh, so let's actually go to luminance. We're gonna go in. This is the in button here. Then we're gonna go to brightness and turn that all the way up. It's actually a little bit more intuitive than I expected. Um, however, I have used a lot of different menu systems, so you'll probably be slightly slower than me. Uh, I would assume you do have some gamma control there, which is very cool. You have, let's see, gamma one, gamma three, gamma two. So you have three different gamma settings. Let's just keep it in that for now. We have different HDR modes. We have uh, the eco mode here, which is interesting. So let's turn that text internet, game, movie, sports, reading, it's black and white, interesting. So we're gonna keep it a standard with 100% brightness on. We'll go through to the color settings. We have warm. So it's actually interesting. We have quite a lot of adjustments. You can also see here, 
instead of everything being 50% with the red, green, blue, we actually have different settings here. So it almost looks like this was maybe slightly calibrated in the actual monitor's OS, which is very, very interesting, not something we see a lot. Uh, again, don't wanna confirm that, but quite interesting. We have picture boost, which is what I would assume to be maybe like a shadow booster. We have OSD settings, different things like that. Uh, game settings. So there is a game mode. What is game mode? Okay, so we just have different additional picture settings, I guess, um, which is kind of interesting. We Okay, so we do have like a shadow control, shadow enhancement there. These are the overdrive settings, <laughs> which is off right now. It is not low, medium, high. It is weak, medium, and strong. I like that. <laughs> We're gonna leave it in off for now. Uh, then we also have AMD FreeSync, which is on, and we have the frame counter, which is kind of cool that we have a frame counter. Um, and then I believe there's a little bit of extra things. They just call them extra. They don't know quite where to put them. Quite interesting. Weak, medium, and strong. I like that. With that, let's check out to see if this thing can output 10 bits of color, and then we'll hop in game, see how this thing does. All right, so can it output 10 bits of color? It cannot, but it is outputting eight bits of color, which is still impressive for this price point. All right, guys, so now here in Forza, we're actually gonna check our settings. There we go, 1920 by 1080, and we're gonna bump that up to 240 hertz, V-Sync on, no motion blur. All right, so here in game, Super, super fluid, really, really fluid there. Do see some ghosting, for sure I do see some ghosting. It's a VA panel, it's pretty much what I expected. The colors, now Forza is kind of a difficult game to test colors in. I will say, the 240 hertz is pretty amazing that we can actually get that in a gaming monitor. They only cost 160 bucks. Now the colors here are not as good as an IPS panel in a similar price point, but there's no way that you're going to get an IPS panel at 160 bucks, that is 240 hertz. There's just no chance. Now, from the distance that I am right now, which is a little bit further away, typically what I would do when I'm using a controller, although this is on PC right now, I'm just using a controller with Forza, the PPI looks great. From this distance, which is a little bit more than an arm's length away, is great. You don't notice any pixelation, but if you're on a mouse and keyboard, so I'm gonna switch to a little bit closer, at this distance, you do start to notice some pixelation. However, that's what you get with 1920 by 1080. That's just how it's going to be at 27 inches. Is it unplayable? By no means. Now, is it super bright? No, it's definitely not super bright. The brightness here is not amazing, but I unfortunately do not have Battlefield 1 or any FPS game currently downloaded on this, which I typically like to use to test out monitors, the ghosting, it doesn't look like it's smearing incredibly hard for a VA panel. Especially here, we're gonna watch the black wing on that smoke right there. Like there definitely is smearing, but it's not horrible. Now let's go into and actually change some modes. Forza typically is a little bit not oversaturated, just the game itself. So we're actually gonna go in and we're gonna go into the color temperatures here. And we're gonna try the different ones. We have warm, normal, cool, sRGB, that's interesting, sRGB, and then users, so you can actually change them yourself. We're gonna leave it in warm for now. The colors in this, they're not unsaturated, but they're definitely not the most intensely beautiful colors. The pink is nice and pink on the car, but it doesn't absolutely pop out of the screen. Part of that's going to be the vibrance in terms of brightness, and part of that's going to be the color gamut. Uh, and then part of that is also gonna be it being a VA panel. Now, there's no question that you're not gonna get the best panel in the world for 160 bucks, but if you want 240 hertz at this cheap price point and still having a fairly large 27 inch panel, this seems like it could be very good. Obviously, this is full of compromises. You're going to compromise, but I mean, you get a nice stand. It's slightly curved, which is nice. The biggest thing to consider here is one, what is the competition? So that's what I'm gonna look into heavily in the full review coming in a few days but let's test the ghosting now and see how this does. All right, so here with the UFO test, we have quite a bit of ghosting. Now, it's not absolutely the worst VA panel I've seen out there. This is pretty middle of the road. It's pretty standard for VA panels, especially in this price point. It's definitely noticeable in game, but this is why I wanted to check it here. We haven't actually changed the overdrive settings or the ghosting settings or whatever you wanna call them. So let's go into the settings. We go into, I believe it is game, select that, go down to overdrive, and we are in the off setting. We're gonna change it to weak, medium, and strong. Okay, so strong causes pixel overshoot or inverse ghosting. Medium does not. Weak adds ghosting and then off adds a little bit more ghosting. So medium is what you should keep it in. That's what I'm gonna say. 
do you take that officially? Uh, it's a pretty much night and day difference between medium and strong in terms of the overshoot. So I'm just gonna tell you, medium is what you should set this in, and it does decrease the ghosting. We're obviously getting the majority of the ghosting in those darker scenes. You're gonna mainly see it a lot more up here than you are in those brighter scenes, which, which makes sense on why in Forza it didn't look as ghosting y as the top one. Now, is this horrible ghosting for a VA panel in this price point? No. If you're gonna be doing a lot of fast paced FPS games, is this a no go? It really depends on you. If you cannot stand playing with a lot of ghosting and you're gonna be gaming in maybe games that have darker environments, you are going to get ghosting with this panel. If you don't want a lot of ghosting and you want 240 hertz, you're gonna to have to switch this out for an IPS panel rather than going for a VA panel, especially in this price point, but you're just not gonna get an IPS panel in this price point with 240 hertz. Is it still worth it? I would say we'll have to see with the review. I'm gonna go through, check out the competition, check out everything else. But yeah, again, if you wanna check it out, Amazon links below, review coming out in a couple of days. But yeah, this is Type-C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.